Great, so we'll go ahead and get started then. So uh, welcome everyone. This is the very last session of HD Year's Virtual Congress 2022. And we really hope you found the event useful in some manner. All of our sessions will be on the On Demand and YouTube shortly. We have one very last special presenter for you today, and that's the wonderful Charles Sabine, who was recently awarded OBE by the Queen of England for his work in the Huntington's disease community. He's going to be talking today about remaining positive despite the setbacks in recent research, and he's just been at the CHDI conference in Palm Springs, so can give us some updates hot off the press. So I'll hand over now to Charles, who's going to give you some updates from his perspective, and then we'll do a Q&A. Thank you, Charles. Thank you. Thank you, Hayley. Uh, and yes, uh, hello from Palm Springs, which is where I still am. That's how uh, hot off the press the news I'm going to give you from here is, and it is really you know, some good news at last, uh, as I'll be able to explain. Um, uh, yes, thank you for mentioning the OBE. I should point out that if, uh, I think it says on down there, Dr. Charles Sabine, which I'm not, uh, that I'm not uh, quite, uh, <laughs> I'm really not a researcher, but anyway, that uh, is very flattering to call me doctor. I'm actually just Mr. Charles Sabine, but anyway. Um, I do, as I think all of you know, have a lot of um, skin in the game, as it were, for this uh, community because I have te I tested positive for the HDG and I've lost all my, pretty well all of my family, one way or another, or everyone older than me to the disease. So uh, I have a lot of uh, interest in this, not least because I was on the clinical trial itself, the Roche one, which uh, we've just been hearing about here. So. Before I get on to that, let me just explain a little bit about how I think we can answer the question for how, for, for, for how to stay positive, uh, given the kind of results that we had last in that awful time last March. And I think that there are lots of reasons to be able to do that generally, um, uh, not least because of the fact that the momentum really is truly moving in the right direction. It's kind of like a sort of snowball running down a hill that you know, it might sort of, you know, hit some bumps along the way, uh, um, but the snowball is still gathering speed down the hill and gathering more snow. Um, we've also got to remember uh, how far we've come. Um, if you haven't seen a film called Hoping Machine, um, which was effectively the keynote speech from the CHDI uh, Therapeutics Conference last year, because it was virtual, then do watch it because it's an hour of looking at through the eyes of people who are the family members who've given keynote, conf keynote speeches at this conference that I've just been at. And it really gives a very good, I think a very good perspective of answering the questions of how to stay positive and putting everything in perspective. And one of the, one of the things is that I interview in that um, uh, the, the, the members of the Guthrie family, um, and uh, Marjorie Guthrie, when she, in her lifetime, she remembers her mother starting um, the HDSA, you know, from her kitchen table back in the 1960s. Um, and she talks in it about how extraordinary it is that we've got from her mother, literally calling, putting an ad in the local paper saying, if anyone has heard of HD, call this number. Um, and how we've got from that to where we are now, which is an unprecedented uh, and, and unequaled collaboration of people working, a global collaboration, working across the world with the greatest scientific minds that could be applied really in, one, in, a, in a collaboration which doesn't exist in other fields. I, I speak a lot to people about this. And, you know, if you go into this, uh, say, Alzheimer's or Parkinson's or, you know, other fields like that, there is none of the sense of this collaboration. Everyone here is on the same side. They all want one thing. It's not for their drug to work, but for someone's drug to work. And that is a huge reason for hope um, for all of us. Um, but all of those, I think, are, are, are things that you can watch in, in that film, Hoping Machine. It's a one hour film. And if you have not seen it, or if you know anyone who has not seen it, 
pass it on to them and watch it because it's uh, it's a it, it, it's a good uh, way of seeing just what's happening. So yes, uh, we heard today, uh, we heard this week rather about uh, a, 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 the as you probably heard I think uh, earlier today about in more detail from uh, the guys from Roche uh, about what they now have seen in their new data and. Basically, what happened was, of course, last March, and to make it so much worse, it all happened in the middle of a pandemic, and that made the, everything considerably worse because we couldn't even mourn together, because it really was a mourning process, um, not just for me who was on the trial, but I think, you know, all of us. And it was kind of like we, you know, we, we were suffering a funeral without being able to be together for it. It was tough. It was very, very tough. And, and there, there's no doubt about the fact that that was uh, a huge setback. Um, but the very good news is that back here for the first in-person Huntington's conference for two years, we got a different perspective on that, which is very significant. Um, because we, when that Roche trial was stopped, there was a real questioning about whether the whole Huntington lowering approach might actually be wrong. Um, and so many companies were, uh, were, were, were founding their principles on this, this Huntington, lowering of the Huntington protein. So that was going, that was, if that, if that trial data had been completely negative, it would have been a really severe blow. However, as you may have heard, uh, this week, we heard here at the conference uh, from Roche how, about how further analysis of their data indicated a subgroup of participants where the news was different. Um, and that happened to be one which was predominantly people who were younger. Um, now, the, the companies now, they also said, it explained that the dosing had been, uh, the, the dosing they admit was wrong. Um, and they're now, just now designing a different trial with the same ASO, roughly the same ASO, but with lower dosing uh, and younger participants. Now, this is really crucial uh, to the field, not just because you know it shows that the Roche, that Roche are now investing huge amounts of money in another trial, and they're not going to throw bad money um, after you know after into into a pot that's uh, if they don't think there's something that they could get out of it. Um, um, so, so that is really important that there was some positive data or what they call a signal. Uh, from that data, um, very significant indeed, and a real relief to everyone here. Um, back in those dark COVID days of March uh, 21, there was also um, disappointing news from Wave Life Sciences. Um, uh, the trial of their ASO drug was stopped within a week of Roche's, so you know it was a it was a bad week. Um, um, but the news we've heard is, we've discovered here is that WAVE Life Sciences 2 has found uh, a way forward to improve their trials and it's on an accelerated path. So in, it's going to take, it's going to be much faster, they, they promised me. Um, uh, but just to explain a little bit about the WAVE drug, is that unlike the Roche ASO, antisense oligonucleotide, which, which aims to, put, to lower both the mutant and the healthy protein, the WAVE drug targets just the mutant Huntington. Um, and this feel, this gives the, us all another shot on goal. Um, and this is a very important, another reason why uh, for, for us all, for all of you guys to stay very positive because we don't have all of our eggs in one basket here. We have, uh, a, what is really significant is that we have all sorts of different approaches to how to develop therapies uh, and they're coming from different directions. And, uh, and that increases the le likelihood, of course, that uh, one of them will, will, will write. The more shots on goal you have, the better. And they're all moving very fast as well. Um, we also, we, 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 ha we heard um, from another company called Triplet Therapeutics. Um, and they uh, have, was effect that Triplet was effectively, um, uh, established after the GWAS, the, the, the GWAS data, as it, as it is known, uh, which is using samples from, from uh, Enroll HD. So basically, it was, it, 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 the triplet was established 
because of the existence of that data. And what they do is they're developing ASOs for another approach, targeting not the Huntington gene, but specifically, but other modifying genes which affect the course of the disease. And they are uh, right now targeting one called, they call uh, MSH3. Um, and that too is moving into clinical trials. Uh, and they're pretty excited about how that uh, is going. Um, we've also heard uh, this week about um, the trials of uh, real progress about what could be a, an absolute game changer for treatments, uh, what are called small molecule drugs. Now, these would be taken at home in uh, a liquid or pill form. Um, and this really is a game changer because if this works, and that so far, they're, um, it's all looking, you know, on track for, and they're all going, they're going, these are going into uh, clinical trials this year as well. I'll tell you more about the companies. But the, the reason that these are really so exciting is that uh, they won't cost anything like, obviously, the, ex the enormous, you know, costs of setting up uh, hospital beds to, you know, give people lumbar punctures. This would be something that literally... I mean, it, it wouldn't necessarily be a cheap, cheap drug, but it will be much cheaper because we will just eventually just be able to take these um, at home in, in, in a pill form or in a liquid form. It's also extremely uh, exciting because it would mean that these drugs could get to be in countries which where, you know, the countries are poor, like, for example, in South America, where we know there are a lot of people with Huntington's disease who wouldn't be able to afford the expensive ASO treatments, but uh, could get this, this drug. Now, these kinds of uh, uh, pills. Um, PTC Therapeutics is one of those, and it has a pill called PTC518. Um, uh, and uh, as well as um, uh, showing, uh, how obviously being so much easier for patients to, in, you know, to take, it also uh, allows greater flexibility in dosing. And dosing is something that, you know, we've all been a little bit wary about after what happened in the, um, the, the, my, the trial that I was involved with, where dosing was, was crucial because the ASOs um, that I was receiving, you can't really, you know, you, you kind of get a bit stuck with the dosing. You can't sort of alter it. Uh, you, you, you know, you, you, if you're having something, say, every four months, as I was, uh, you can't just suddenly sort of change the dosing very quickly. You can with these drugs, these pills that will be taken every day. So that's, that gives a huge flexibility, um, which is really a good thing for us. Um, Novartis, the, the huge pharma giant, they have a very similar molecule to the PTC one. Theirs is called Branaplam. Um, and that's already now being tested in HD patients. Um, and that was a drug that was already been successfully treating young people, young children with spinal muscular atrophy. And because um, it's been used in small children, that obviously shows that it's very safe, clearly. Um, um, and, you know, the, the, the difference, by the way, also about these two, these two small molecule drugs is that they don't just uh, um, uh, target the brain, they affect the cells in all of the body because a lot of people don't realize, I didn't until just now, that actually um, HD is just as present in my hand as it is in my brain. Um, so, you know, there are those that some people who think, well, you know what, we should, we should be looking at the whole body. Uh, and that's certainly the view of these guys who, who are doing the small molecule. Um, so these, the other thing is that there were a couple of things to say about the other, the, the, what we've seen here is that all of the, all of the, well, most of the um, uh, things that we've been seeing here, not only are all great sh different shots on goal, but they are all rather than uh, targeting just HD symptoms, they are actually uh, disease, dealing with a, a disease modification. In other words, you know, targeting how the disease progress, progresses. Um, we've heard from a company uh, called Unicure as well, as, as I think you may have heard, which is a completely different shot on goal, um, which already in human trials, I think, I believe in Poland, um, but certainly in Europe, 
and that's a one-off procedure for life, an approach uh, known in the field as, as one and done. So, you know, you know, yes, the halting of the Roche trial last month was a huge blow um, to all of us, um, you know, me included, uh, coming, at, especially coming at the moment it did during the pandemic. But I can tell you from here that that now has turned out to be a speed bump, not a brick wall. And the momentum is right back in the right direction for all of us families uh, and HTEO. Back to you. Hi, thank you so much. Oh, my video's just taken a minute to come on. That's great. Thank you so much, Charles, for your um, thorough update. It was really interesting to hear your experiences. Oh, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, Go ahead. This, will all, this will all be in my postcard from Palm Springs, which uh, I, you know, I produce every year, or well, no, normally produce, and that will be um, available in three or four weeks, um, a more in-depth uh, discussion. It's kind of like a sort of TV version of HD Buzz mm -hmm. when I'll be talking to all of these people and doing a, a sort of report from here. So look out for, for, for the postcard from Palm Spring. Thank awesome. you, Charles, for that. That was really nice. Um, we do have a couple of questions for you here, um, yep. if you're happy to answer them. Yep. Uh, so Josephine's asking, what made you choose to get involved in the trial? Well, okay. Um, well, the, 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 the Roche ASO trial. Well, um, that was kind of an easy decision in a sense because it looked um, so extraordinarily promising. Um, because first of all, the, all of the animals uh, models had shown improvement in the animals, um, in that you know before it went into humans, and when it first went into humans, um, we saw this amazing graph here in this building. Um, I think it was two thousand and seventeen. I might be wrong, but anyway, a few years ago, we saw this extraordinary graph. Um, which they, I think it was Sarah Tabrizi put it up on uh, uh, on a screen, and it showed very distinct, and you know, you could see it. You didn't have to be a scientist to 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 to, to see it to understand it. It showed that the more they gave of the ASO, the lower the protein, the the, the hunting protein went down, and and it happened. I mean, this happened, and it still happens. So, so. Every, you know, all of the all of the common sense suggested. Well, therefore, if it's worked in the animals, and the same thing is now happening in the humans, it it must happen in humans. Now, something went wrong in the next step, which was not logical. Um, I mean, it was you know, I should have you know, I was I like everyone was thought was convinced there would be some benefit. Um, we couldn't understand it when they when it when the, when this data came out, and now that it's been now effectively, um, Roche an, analyzing this data realizes that actually it's not that the drug doesn't work. Thank God, it is really that the trial was somehow wrong itself. You know, it was you know a probably dosing thing, you know, other things that are sort of technical things, but that yeah, they they are now you know adjusting that. But the reason that I went into that trial was that. You know, it looked uh, like it was going to work. Thank you, Charles. Superb. Um, yeah, and we've got a lot of hope coming up. Um, and yeah, HT Burst were doing a lot of a lot of tweets about the CHCI's convention, so we definitely recommend that you go there and check out what they were doing as well um, over last week. Um, anything to add, Haley? No, just that um, as you've heard this weekend from a number of the pharmaceutical companies, there's still a lot of a lot of research ever increasing, speeding up research going on in this field. And we also, for our young people, just heard from Sarah Tabrizi, and I'd encourage you to go and check out her session when it's on demand and on YouTube next week, because she was saying currently it's harder to do trials in... Um, people who've maybe tested positive but are still yet to be clinically diagnosed with the onset 
of symptoms. And this new stage in study gives us a stage zero for this part where you test positive with a greater than 40 CAG repeat, you know, until you start to, to progress and then start to have symptoms. So this is gonna help in terms of research um, to be able to target earlier on um, in, in, the, in the process. So that gives us some hope, uh, particularly at HDEO, um, for young people as well to be involved in research in more of a pre-manifest based in, in the future rather than when symptoms start. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, the, the, the Sarah's work in that field is, is really important. Um, not least because, you know, it, it's common sense, I think. We all kind of, you know, you don't, you don't need to be a scientist to really realise that it's better to treat any disease as early as possible. You know, that's just common sense. It's the same with a cold or, you know, cancer. It doesn't matter what it is. And, and Huntington's is no different. So the earlier that you can... Uh, get in there, the better. And the fact is that all of those of us who are gene positive have this disease from birth. So we know, we, we actually have the advantage of knowing who has the disease, which of course, no, that, that's unique. And it's another you know, thing that's unique. No other disease can do that. You don't, people don't know who is, you know, people don't know when they're you know, 18 that they're gonna get Alzheimer's 50 years later. If they did, they would be able to actually intervene earlier. We have this great you know, tool, which is that we know everyone who is going to have the disease or have the disease. Effectively, you have the disease for your life, really. You know, I think we need to all move out of the idea that you only have the disease when you start to not be able to walk well. Basically, the, di the disease is there. We need to look at it in that way. And that's um, kind of where all of this is heading with the work that Sarah is doing, which is to say, look, you know, if we can find other biomarkers, um, you know, biomarkers are, are ways of showing uh, the disease's progression. So, the, so like in other, in other words, a, a biomarker of of uh, a flu is a you know, you have a temperature, say. So that's a biomarker. So, but so we we are getting more and more advanced in understanding bi biomarkers for Huntington's disease before. The old idea of what you know what shows the disease. In other words, it's we're, we're, we're way beyond now people having to say, well, how are you walking up and down the you know, you know we can now look at look at uh, MRI scans and things like that and see the disease progressing way before you know the, the the old idea of symptoms. And so this gives us a huge opportunity if we can convince the authorities to take those kinds of biomarkers as effective as ones that to show whether a drug is working, then we can start to intervene much, much earlier with younger people. But it needs younger people to get involved in Sarah's work and, and you know, any kind of involvement in order for us to progress on this. So, you know, this is a great opportunity for young people. Ready, Charles. Slam me up. <laughs> um, if I'm still counting as the young person again, uh, 33, so I've still got some time. Yeah, yeah. You're so, uh, we've got one more, one last question from Ashley. Um, so, um, how can we stay positive as a group, and how does Charles stay positive? Well, um, okay, I, I, again, I'm going to go back to hi Ashley. If that if that's if that's Ashley. Might be the Ashley in uh, Belfast, yes. actually. I don't know. It might be another one, but anyway. Hi, Ashley, wherever you it are. It is. Um, it is. It's Northern, <laughs> Nor Northern Irish, Ashley, it is, yeah. <laughs> I'm, excuse me, Northern Irish. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not drunk, Ashley, I think it is. Um, <laughs> yes, it is. That's the Ashley. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, excuse me. I should say Northern Ireland, not... Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, um, uh, Lauren Byrne will, will be clipping my ear. Um, so, yeah, how do we say positive? Well, you know what? Ashley, look at the, again, at Hoping Machine, and you'll see there a wonderful quote from uh, Sven Olaf um, in it, uh, who points out that the community is the best drug we have, um, and it really is. And it, this, is a, this is a community not just of all of the, um, of the, all of the patients and all their families, but it is one worldwide community. I can promise you that that is the case without, that is not, you know, just words. I can tell you from here 
where, where we've just had several hundred people together, uh, family members and, you know, uh, and um, uh, researchers. This is all one community, all working together. And that the strength of that community is, is what is how I stay positive, because I know that nothing this powerful in a community can end up uh, without uh, success in the, in the long run. Well, a wonderful answer. Um, we completely agree here at HDO, of course. Um, Charles, thank you so much. We fully appreciate your time. Uh, you always give your time when we ask, and, and we fully appreciate it. Um, and we really um, were so happy to see that you got um, awarded an OBE recently. Um, fully, fully deserved. So thank you so much from, from all of us at HDO and I'm here today. Thank you. We appreciate you. My pleasure. Hayley, do you want to finish up? Thank you so much, Matt, and thank you, Charles. So we've now come to the end of our uh, two-day Congress. I'm sure you'll all agree it's been an amazing event again. This is our second and me and Matt were wrapping up this time last year with Charles. <laughs> um, <laughs> So a whole year has passed and it's just been another amazing event. A Next few things year in person. Yeah, <laughs> we need to we need to um, get to meet up at some point. Um, now COVID is, you know, yeah. Let's see what the, the rest of the world, let, let's see what else happens in the world uh, ahead of next year. Um, and we're thinking of all our, all our young people across the world and everyone who's joined. Um, so watch for emails on, on updates over the next week. Um, so the sessions will stay in the on demand tab for the next 30 days. And they will be also uploaded to our YouTube channel during the next week. And there you will be able to access the different translations in uh, people's native, native languages and you can rewatch any sessions you missed. Please, if you can also complete the survey. So we have a post-Congress survey and we'd love to get your feedback. It's so important for us to be able to get your feedback, what went well, what we can do better for next time, um, and some of the questions in there about HD Year's services. We are thrilled um, we are able to offer this event for free to all our young people and just a small charge for professionals to join. Um, and this is made possible because of our sponsors. So thank you so much to all our sponsors. We do, I put in the chat, have a HDO fundraising page for, for Congress. So if you have enjoyed it and you are able to, to spare, you know, a couple of dollars, that's fantastic. If you're not, we're, we're glad you've been able to, to join the session and we're pleased to be able to offer it for, for free to our, to our young people. If you do need any support at all after anything we've discussed today, please just reach out for us. We're here for you with anything at any time. And we, as you know, we're celebrating our 10 years this year, uh, 10 years since Matt and BJ founded HDO. So follow us as we continue to celebrate and support and educate and empower young people impacted by Huntington's disease. So that's all from us today. I don't know if there's any last words from, from Charles or Matt, but we're, we're finished up here, everybody. Thank you very much. Yeah, just a final shout out. Thank you to our team as well, our, our track host again, and um, our tech team as well, Raj and Co. They've been fantastic again. Thank you so much. Um, and yeah, and obviously the, the community here who attended have been brilliant and, and really engaged with every session. So fantastic to see you all and I hope to see you all in person soon. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And to all our speakers uh, who've been so have a generous. Have a good day, night, whatever it is. Bye, guys. <laughs>